We have several things we'd like to, to lift up with you today. Uh, Doug and Gail, I'm going to have you come up if you would. Uh, our uh, social action ministry team continues to do amazing things, and this is just another opportunity for us in one of our uh, sponsoring organizations for us to hear a little bit about how we can celebrate and support others. So this is our latest campaign. Um, it's called, what is it called? Put a, <laughs> put a smile on someone's face. It was his idea, that's why I went into it. <laughs> so um, Hawthorne Health is an organization that um, helps more than 500 people in our community, uh, mostly immigrants, and they do everything from GED and citizenship um, prep for um, getting a job, all kinds of things. And they're um, a really important um, tool and resource for a lot of people in this community. Um, last year, you may recall, we did the toilet paper drive for them, and they were very appreciative. Uh, so they have a store um, that is located right in the um, educational building at Hawthorne that people can come and pick up things that you can't get through any other, um, through SNAP or through any of the other types of um, charitable organizations. So um, we thought it was appropriate with all the candy that's associated with Halloween to maybe do a toothpaste and um, toothbrush drive. And as a matter of fact, when I talked to um, Sandy at Hawthorne Health, she said last week we had 231 people come through and we are out of toothpaste. So um, Doug's going to show you how you do it. Yeah, uh, j just one thing, one more thing about um, Hawthorne Helps. I think it's, it's great, obviously, it, there, there's a homelessness or a risk of homelessness component to this, which is why it, it falls under the auspices of um, social action, but, but there's a broader community, and that is that there, there's a racial component to this, and then obviously an, an immigrant component to this, and I think considering the messaging uh, that's so prevalent in the country today, uh, us helping out a little bit in that area I think is beneficial. So, so bring it in. We'll have this basket out uh, by the office door um, to avoid all the construction between now and November 6th. So bring in toothbrushes, toothpaste for both children and adults. Both are needed. Thank you. Thanks. Good. Thank you for your work with that. Any questions for them before they go away? None. Perfect. So thank you. Thanks for your leadership in supporting that. Several other announcements we want to lift up as we uh, come together on this day. Our highway cleanup is today from 3 o'clock to 4.30. Show up here at the church. They bus you out, and it really is a, a great opportunity for us to uh, help clean up the environment. So be here from 3 o'clock to 4.30. We also want to let you know that our Dry Queen Bingo fundraiser is going to be a fun event. I'm really excited to see what, what happens around here with that, uh, with Bob Werner in charge. Who knows, right? So we'll see what happens. So come and join us for that. You're welcome to buy those tickets. It uh, should be just a fun, exciting night for us on Halloween Eve. So we have thanks for that. We also want to share with you our truck retreat on uh, the 30th. Beth, do you want to say anything to that, or are we just going to have people come? Do you know anything about that yet? You know what's happening, right? I absolutely actually have no idea, so okay, somebody else is going to help go. me. Um, I but I will say that my family will be there all in costume, um, and so we're expecting some fun. So some, somebody help us out. <laughs> Friendly. Say it again. Bingo is family friendly. Kids are welcome, and it will be definitely appropriate for children. Yep. Thank you for that. Yeah, they're they're really making it G-rated. G-rated. That's right. <laughs> there you go. So we really want to encourage you. It should be just a great fun opportunity for us to do that. Also, uh, the truck or treat. Sign up for that. Who's in charge of that? By the. Okay, Jessica Howard. So we'll find out more specifics about that. We, Okay, sign up out in the hallway for that. It'd be great. We would have as many people there to help our kids with that as well. Also, our nursery needs some help. So uh, we keep asking for this. And folks, this is a fun, simple thing to do. Some of you already are in the nursery. Uh, we need to really provide just an opportunity for you to be there for our children, uh, at both at the 8.30 service and 11 o'clock service. It's a time to miss my sermon, so it's not anything big. So it's okay. But just go there. Please sign up to do that. We really, really need your help. Uh, to make sure that our children uh, can have a place, a safe place to be. So please uh, call the church office if you're able to help out with that. We also want to let you know the Fall Bazaar is coming up. And as Carol said, there's only one bizarre woman today. So Carol, thank you for that. Yeah. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Anne is sick today, so she texted me and said, you're on your own. So here I am. 
So she still needs help in the kitchen and she needs people to bring bars for the lunch stand. So if you can provide any help or bars, there's a sign up in the social hall. Um, uh, we also have, I'm trying to juggle, I said I'm not very good at juggling, but we have um, these bizarre flyers. You can pick them up, take them to your place of work, wherever, you know, wherever you can think of that um, other people will see. So that would be a great help. I also have what you can bring and what we don't want you to bring um, um, to the donate for the rummage sale portion. So that will be posted in the social hall also. And there's also a sign up to help sort and lay out all the, all the goodies that have been donated for the rummage sale. So if you could sign up or you can call me at home or whatever too. Um, and one more thing about the nursery. We really need your help. Um, I don't, we've called people and um, it's a really fun thing to do. I've done it since my kids were little and it's an hour hour and 15 minutes out of your time once a month or you know just a couple months here and there so if you can help that would be awesome thank you thank you carol for your leadership with that uh, a couple of other announcements if you haven't picked up your shirts yet those shirt orders are, are in the church office you're welcome to go when you pick up your shirt just uh, check off your name so we know that you have picked those up as well we also want to uh, let you know uh, about a couple of things. One, you see good old Gertie Gratitude up here. Uh, today we're talking about the mind and the brain. And so uh, we gave her some, some tools up there to help us think about what the mind and the brain and how, how we give in gratitude. Now, when you came in today, you should have all received, if you wanted a little heart uh, piece of paper. I'm not sure if you were told exactly what to do. Uh, who's, Ruth, are you speaking to that? We know that there are many, many things we are great, grateful for every day, and we're going to be doing this every Sunday now until Commitment Sunday, and we're going to put the, our notes of gratitude up on that large red heart in front, and um, we've got plenty of things to put on there, so please, please write that down. Thank you. And thank you for that. So, so we're looking for you. If you um, have seen somebody else share a gift of gratitude to others, just indicate that. Or in your workplace, if, if you've received that or you've given an act of gratitude, we want to just want to celebrate all the gifts uh, that are so present and so available to people. So we really want to invite you to do that as well. I just want to lift up a, 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 an update. Bev Morton is doing her rehab and recovery and at the Madonna, and so we're so thankful for that. Uh, Maxine Kopp as well is a Samaritan, so we do want to have... Uh, Maxine and our thoughts and prayers today as we gather. Other announcements or joys or concerns, items that we missed? Being none, I'm going to invite us to come to worship John if you would please bring God's spirit. All right, good morning everybody. We are talking about the mind and the brain today and so we want to talk a little bit about Gertie. So Gertie has her blueprints and her hard hat. What do those have to do with the brain do you think? What do you think? What does a heart had to have to do with the brain or the head or the mind? Are we sleepy? You need to wake up? Okay, we stretch. Stretch a little bit. Wake up. Wake up your bodies. Because I need those minds ready. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit. So blueprints. Blueprints for our expansion out there. Those are why? Why would that be something about the mind? What do you think? Because it takes somebody's mind to create it, right? So somebody had to use their mind to create a blueprint, to think it through. Hard hat? What does a hard hat have to do with the brain? What do you think? Build? Build, yeah. Because when you, when, if you need it to go out there on the build site, and to build, you have to be using your brains. I also happen to bring up here with me one of the orders that we use up front to tell us what's happening. What do you think this has to do with the brain? What do you think? Reading. Reading. 
And somebody had to create this, right? So we had to think it through. And then I brought up here these thank you hearts, these little gratitude hearts that everybody got at the door. Did any of you guys get these at the door? No? Well, good, because I have one for you here. And so each week you can take one of these and you can draw a picture, you can write something, you can tell us what you're grateful for. So I'm going to send, I'm going to have you each take a pen and a piece of paper and draw or write something that you are grateful for. On the front or the back, whichever side is the one that looks the best to you. And you can do this every single week and you can tell us what you're grateful for. Because what your minds are thinking about, about gratitude, is just as important as what all of your parents are grateful for. Because all of us have our brains in our heads, and all of us get to use that space to be grateful, to think, to imagine God right here with us. And all of you out there, if you don't have a heart, make sure you get a heart so that you too can show us what you're grateful for. And and if you're done drawing or writing, you can hand them back to me, and we're going to put them right here with Gertie until the end of service, and then we're going to put them up on the board. Do any of you want to share what you wrote or draw? Drew? What did you share? What did, you're grateful for God. That's a wonderful thing to be grateful for. What are you grateful for? Um, family. Family. That's a wonderful thing. Do you want to share yours? What are you grateful for? Um, sharing. Sharing? like that. What are you grateful for? Pens and paper early in the morning? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to share what you're grateful for? No? Okay. All right, so if you're done, you can hand me your papers and your pens. You can put our pens away. Marker. Markers. Well, isn't a marker a pen? Yeah. Do you think there's a difference between a marker and a pen? And we're going to leave these right here at Gertie's feet so that we can show that we are very grateful people. So will you guys grab hands with me, and we're going to say a little, quick little prayer. Do you want to come be in our prayer, too? You want to come pray with us? Do you want to sit there? You don't have to. All right, follow me. Dear God, thank you for our hearts and minds that are so grateful. Help us, to, help us to use our brains in all we do. Amen. All right, go ahead on back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm going to invite Jeff to come forward and uh, share a little bit today as we continue in our Giving and Gratitude series. Each week we're picking a different uh, body part to talk about. Last week was hands. Uh, this week is about the mind and uh, the brain. But as Jeff is getting ready to speak up here, I just want to bring you, I forgot to bring you up to speed on the uh, building project. You may have noticed some of the walls are going up and the, and, uh, the initial roofing structure is going up. Uh, if some of you would like to, to just take a walk out there, we can do that. Um, we need to be very careful doing that, but I'd be glad to meet you in the fellowship hall afterwards and kind of walk you out there so you can see what is happening. And we give thanks for that. Jeff, thank you for sharing this morning. Good morning. I'm Jeff Hansen and a part of the stewardship committee. I was born in Durand, Wisconsin. For the first seven years of my life, our family farmed south of Menominee and attended the Lutheran Church in Menominee. My mother served on the school board, at the, uh, at the local school board, at the age of 25. She spent uh, many evenings driving from farm to farm, trying to convince the locals that we needed to condense these uh, one-room schoolhouses into a uh, centrally located modern school. I was fortunate to start the first grade <clears throat> in the brand new $60,000 Downsville School. <laughs> it featured uh, three classrooms, grades one through eight, a small gymnasium, a cafeteria, and indoor plumbing. <laughs> at, the, at the age of seven, we moved to Spring Valley, Minnesota, and soon joined the ALC Lutheran Church there, where I attended Sunday school and the confirmation classes. I recall that much of my early religious instructions involved following the Ten Commandments out of fear of going to hell. When I was 10, my parents divorced 
Uh, my mother raised six kids while working full time as a bank teller. Uh, it was hard to regularly attend church as a family. Much of the, uh, the time, our older, us older kids would attend with our friends. <clears throat> to say that money was tight would be an understatement. We were always, but we were always able to give something to our church. I felt proud to put a small gift for my paper out or my lawn mowing tabs in the offering. In my senior year, I moved to Iowa for about a year before coming to Rochester. In Rochester, I would visit different churches from time to time. In my early 20s, I joined uh, Bethany United Methodist Church, where most everyone was involved. Marilyn and I were married there in 1978. <clears throat> she remained Catholic, and we would attend each other's church. Soon after our oldest tour in St. Pius School, I joined the Catholic Church. The large, <clears throat> the large Catholic Church was much easier than the small Methodist Church. You could just show up for an hour of rituals and reciting each week. However, Marilyn did volunteer with a women's group, and we both volunteered at school activities. We met a lot of wonderful people at the Catholic churches and schools. I did have a problem with the hierarchy of the church and their failure to address the abuse within the church. I also have a problem with the single issue politics. I believe there is much more to pro-life and anti-abortion. <clears throat> About 10 years ago, we visited other churches, including several times here at Peace, but Marilyn wanted to remain Catholic. During this time, she would connect with various groups pay her own way on international medical mission trips. She asked if I would like to go along to Eastern Europe. I was interested, so in 2007, we went to Moldova, which is in between Romania and Ukraine. It was a uh, joint venture between global health outreach and crossroads communication. We soon found that some of the leaders had a real intolerance for the Russian Orthodox Church, and their main objective was uh, to convert the people to believe exactly as they believed. I kept my opinions to myself, and I helped fit as many reading glasses as possible. I learned in Romanian that uh, my bina was better, my daro was worse, and a smile, and the word natural was a success. Soon after we returned, I came back to Peace Church as a regular visitor and supporter. After about seven years, Paul thought it was time to make it official. <laughs> so, so I formally joined about two years ago. Peace is a very friendly, open-minded, and accepting church. I don't have to think exactly like the person seated next to me. We study the life of Christ his teachings, and try to follow them in our daily lives. Our children are long past parochial school and college. Marilyn and I are reaching a time in our lives when we could just kick back and consume all of the fruits of our labor. That's not our intention. Instead, we think it's a time to give back for all of the blessings that we've received and continue to receive. I know that others here will agree this is truly an opportunity to share our time, our talents, and our treasures. Thank you. Please be seated. I uh, came across that hymn as I was wandering through the hymnal this week, and I am pretty impressed with how well it ends up coming along with my sermon. This morning, as we continue our series on gratitude, we are focusing on the mind. As you heard in that song, as you've heard all morning, as you've heard in that children's message, the mind is a terrible thing to waste, so the phrase goes. And so we do a pretty good job here of engaging that mind at church, in faith formation, in sermon, in book study, race forward, and so many other intellectual ways of engaging that this community does each week. The honest truth is that you can do very little without your mind's engagement. Is it fully engaged at all times? Maybe not consciously. 
There are times in our lives and our days when it feels like our intellectual mind takes a back seat to our lizard brain, that brain stem, our responsive reactionary brain. But even then, the mind is still working. The use of the mind is what differentiates us from other animals, and so it might not be surprising that the mind is of primary importance to most world religions, maybe all. In fact, maybe it is accurate to say that all religions teach that wisdom can be found in the mind. What we do with that mind and how we utilize our faith knowledge is at the heart of our tradition. In Proverbs chapter 2, we hear, hear these words. Tune your ears to the world of wisdom. Set your heart on a life of understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Searching for it like a prospector, panning for gold like an adventurer on a treasure hunt. Then you will understand what it means to love the Lord, and you'll have come upon the knowledge of God. God gives out wisdom free. It is plain spoken in knowledge and understanding. And then, of course, there is the Gospel of John, in which the word or wisdom or logos is at the heart of the divine universe. Before the world began, the word was there. The word was with God, and the word was God. The mind or knowledge is at the heart of the great theological debate of redeemed through faith or redeemed by works. Are we made clean for salvation by having the right faith or by doing the right activities? The pursuit of the mind fills our daily lives and even our nightly lives as well. How many of you have been kept awake or awoken in the middle of the night by a mind that just won't quit? This week I attended the Women of Peace morning gathering, and apart from discussing Barbara Brown Taylor's book on learning to walk in the dark, we talked about how the brain keeps going throughout the night processing that day. Our minds were even set into a pattern of sleep that included a middle-of-the-night awake period to ponder life in previous times. Before electricity, this time of night would have been a great time to give your mind space to develop, to understand that which we have not consciously noted during the day. And then, of course, there is the mind-engaging state of dreaming, which we have to participate in to live. Research shows that all mammals dream, their neural pathways are similar enough to ours that the same need for processing is present. The amount of information we receive on a daily basis is so much greater than what our conscious mind is aware of that we all dream in order to refresh and renew for that following day. The input our brains receive in a day is so great that we and all of creation must continue to process in our off time. The mind is truly amazing and certainly something to be grateful for. Scientists have studied the mind since the beginning of modern time and continue to be amazed by the possibilities and new findings therein. As a psychology major in college, the mind was certainly at the heart of my story. And in turning to theology, the mind has continued to be at the heart of my studies. So if we all use our minds, and it is historically so important to societal development that all religions tackle the topic, what are we to gain by understanding our minds better? Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Romans and speaks to a desire of the author to support the community in developing their faith life through an understanding of the mind. And using that clear, visceral image of community by using the, the metaphor of the body. So let's take a closer look at a longer part of that passage. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to pretend your, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me to say that everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. 
do not be conformed to the way we are, but be transformed by your mind. And be transformed by the work in your mind of understanding this letter and so many others to build that faith. And in that way, you will find out what God wants for you. This text is a great example of that body-mind connection we as Christians have been exploring for thousands of years now. The transformation comes as a result of understanding. Pulling apart this passage, there are several important highlights and why it's so often used in the church, the use of the body metaphor, that differentiation in our abilities and our gifts, and that concept of living sacrifice. In this passage, the use of the body image can be seen as an early metaphor for full connection, possibly because of its primary place in our human understanding of self. We can see ourselves as, as a single unit without separation. There is no visible separation between my limbs and my organs at first view. We, initially know, we intimately know that I am a single being because I don't break apart. I'm not a Lego or a Barbie doll. And so without intervention, we cannot take ourselves apart. But what does it look like to say that individual people who do have a visible space between me and you are one unit in that same way? Can we truly see ourselves as part of a single unit? Can we transform our minds enough to know the will of God? In the first phrase, the author says we are to see our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the divine. Sacrifice would not have been an activity of continued life for these ancient people, however. Sacrifice is not just letting go, a giving up for a time, but a process of cutting entirely away, leaving at the feet of the divine that which was required. Our bodies, if healthy, are not that easily sacrificed, nor should they be. Our bodies are where we live, so while we can look at the passage as a body metaphor, for our community, and in fact, we certainly are in this time, as we are doing with our Giving Generously theme this season. We are to remain a people of living sacrifice. And that would not have computed for those early Christians. Can we sacrifice our ways of life? Can we sacrifice that which really needs to be given away? Don't know about you, but I'm a holder. Even if I know I don't have a purpose for an object, I might keep it just to see if I could use it later, including toilet paper tubes and paper packaging, all of those things I have kept for years in case I might need them. So the idea of sacrifice doesn't come easily and to us may be missed in a world where sacrifice isn't often as animal or physical sacrifice as it may have been to the first hearers of this letter. Can we truly live as a living sacrifice? Can we conceptualize that amount? If we cannot detach of ourselves, what does living sacrifice look like? We are a people of the mind who can separate and compartmentalize our lives, our gifts, our community, as the passage also claims. And this ability to mentally separate is where we get back to living sacrifice. In giving away that which needs to be given away, we must at the same time hold fast to that which we can use and renew what it is needed to become a communal, undivided, single unit of the body of Christ. I said if we were healthy, our bodies are not easily separated because the reality of our physical lives is that there are times when we do cut off, disconnect from ourselves those pieces that are unhealthy, that cause concern. And this is what we must discern how to do with our minds, letting go of our perceptions or our prejudices, our fears, the parts of our minds that separate us from community. These are in need of a letting go. What is in need of sacrifice and what is in need of renewal is our constant work. And we must do what we can to clean, restore, and renew that which we need. But much like exercising a cancerous piece of our bodies, there are times where we must cut away and give entirely away. This is hard work and requires the attention and care of great support systems support systems that we as a community are providing, developing, and building. We must sacrifice the idea that we are separate, that you and I are not the same, that the mind and body are separate, and one can be taken away for the other to grow. The idea of independence, that my life is not intertwined with yours, is something to be sacrificed. We must sacrifice 
the idea that the, to engage the mind is not to engage the body. We must sacrifice the idea that wisdom comes by closing ourselves off so that something else can grow. I believe that if we can understand our bodies and our minds to a greater degree and understand that connection, we can understand our motivations and look forward to a better future. This week, some preparation work began on the house next door, which I will have the great gift to be living in soon. And I don't know that it's even possible to say how grateful I am for that gift. But in that preparation, there is much that must be sacrificed to be cleaned and prepared for new growth and development to happen there. I came to work on Thursday, setting aside that day in my week for sermon preparation, thinking I would be sitting in my office wearing something similar to this. I would sit at my desk and I was going to write this sermon. Well, knowing the work was to begin that morning, I walked next door because much like Pastor Paul, I cannot stop myself. <laughs> and so there I am standing there looking at the carpet, which is to be torn up eventually and saying, well, we can do that. I can rip out a carpet. So I'm on the floor in these clothes, pulling, pulling up carpet, ripping with Ruth and Marie and Lori, Brian, Pastor Paul, so many others who have come in. And so there I am, to be engaging in the mind and yet ripping carpet up and pulling staples out of the floor. A body experience. Needed, perhaps, however, to get me ready to be open to that mindful state of creation that I thought I would cultivate that day. When I walked back across the parking lot and into my office, I sat at my computer for probably 10 minutes blankly until I got back up and walked next door <laughs> to complain that my mind was blank. To which Ruth said, and I really wish I had had a recorder so that I could record it exactly, she said something of, there is something to be said for cleaning out the mind to make space for that which you need much like we are cleaning out so that we can paint fresh. So after a short walk and a, a talk with those ladies, a clean mind cleared of that which was clogging it, it was possible to start the sermon preparation again, reflecting in that space of clarity that I needed a help from a few sources, a little book I have called Science and Religion, a very short introduction, a very short introduction and a read through some of the wisdom texts of our Bible, and of course, returning to those movie quotes that kept running around in my head. In the movie Chicken Run, there's a great line about the mind that kept popping back to me this week as I thought about the mind as a place of giving and that concept of living sacrifice. So let's take a, a look at that scene now. It's a living. You know what the problem is? The fences aren't just round the farm, they're up here. In your heads. There's a better place out there. Somewhere beyond that hill and, and well, it has wide open spaces and lots of trees and grass. Can you imagine that? Cool, green grass. The fences aren't just around the farm. They are around our minds. It is not the fences in our world that stop us. It's those limits that we put our, on our own minds, on our own communities, our own bodies. When we can release ourselves from our mental fences, we can look forward to a better place, like the chickens look forward to their chicken paradise. But to get there, we have to figure out how to cut away that which doesn't serve us well, to support the concept of unity and harmony we wish to strive for. As a single unit, the body of Christ from our passage, we are limitless in what we can do what we can build up, and what we can challenge others to do if we can connect that which seems disparate and join it together. In that section of the reading that was talking about the gifts that are given to each component of the community, it compartmentalizes us into our roles in the church that are not always helpful. These gifts, ministry in ministering, teacher in teaching, exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness, are needed by those that pursue and attend to these tasks, very true. But that is not all that is needed to be a fully connected body of Christ. Just as the hand and the eye may be different parts of the body, their function, their connection in the brain, the mind, means that each uses the skills and abilities of the other 
to create a truly clear picture of what is in front of us. Thus, in the same way, the gifts of the Spirit must also be connected for a true picture of faithful life. The giver uses exhortation, the leader generosity, the compassionate teaching, the teacher ministering, the minister cheerfulness. For every one of these gifts are needed by the others to sustain a full life, a faithful life, to search for the wisdom of the divine in this life and to create that complete body, that one body. We have to release the fence around these categories of the community of Christ so that all people see that each of us has access to these gifts and that we want you to take them up even if you do not see them in yourself to develop them, to to exhort, to teach, to lead, to give, to minister, to care for young, to do all of the world so that we may be doing all these things in the name of peace. It's through the diversity of gifts, the diversity of the parts of the body, the diversity of us, that we can create a whole, and as Romans says, be transformed and see the will of the divine. As we connect our disparate selves into a single being, it's our mental gymnastics we do to reconcile this holy vision of connection with our visible reality of separateness that renews our minds and brings us to God. For we are one body, in this one world. Amen. Amen. My friends, now you know why we're so thrilled to have Pastor Beth come here with us. <laughs> we give thanks. I just want to do a one follow-up. She mentioned about uh, doing some painting at the house. So here's my intro. Today, from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock, you are welcome to come and join us to help out with that. We need your help to get that thing painted out, and there's some other projects coming as well. It's one of the ways we can share our gifts uh, to help out around. Another way is through our financial giving this day, and so we ask you to give out of, the, out of our heart as we share all that we have that God has first given to us. Let's be a blessing to this world around us as we hear Bruce's beautiful song. Take my hand and walk with me a while Cause it seems your smile has left you And don't give in when you fall apart And your broken heart has failed you I'll set a light up on a hilltop to show you my love for this world to see. You can borrow mine when your hope is gone. Borrow mine when you can't go on. Cause the world will not when you're side by side when your faith is hard to find you can borrow mine you can borrow mine and take my love when all that you can see Don't give up Cause I'm not letting go And the God we know Will not fail us We'll lay it all down As we call out Sweet Savior Help our unbelief You can borrow
speak well you are not alone the god who has saved us will never forsake us he's coming to take us take us to our home you can borrow song for us. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Invite you, if you're able, to please rise. We share all of our gifts with God as we give. Thanks to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God the lovely heavenly host and maker Christ and Holy One. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. If you please join in our prayer of dedication this day. Every generous act of giving is a tribute to God's love for us. Be ready to listen and slow to react in anger. Lord, prepare us to be peaceful people and keep our hearts and spirits ready to serve the Lord. Lord, open our hearts to hear and respond to your words of life in ministries of hope and peace. Amen. 